<laughs> All right. I was with you. Here we are. It's yeah. a live broadcast. Hi um, to the three people on it. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know that? Uh, here we are. Um, thank you for anyone watching now. Um, people can jump in. People can ask questions of us on YouTube. They can ask questions um, through the page on the Jumbo Days Virtual Day. Um, they can also ask questions through Facebook and Twitter. So lots of ways for you to communicate with us. Um, you're sitting here with four current students. Um, we're going to have one more joining us, as well as our friend Dan Grayson, who is infamous or famous on your Facebook group, as you may have guessed. Um, I'm Justin Pike. I'm one of the admissions officers. I work here um, on a lot of our web stuff. So what I want to do is just turn it over to the students to start off. So guys, if you want to introduce yourselves, give us some pertinent info, whatever you think the internet needs to know. Oh, goodness. Oh, dear. Um, here, why don't we go left to right? So uh, why don't you go start, Aniket? So, OK. So hi, I'm Aniket. I'm a student from India. I'm an international student studying anthropology and history at Tufts. And cool. cool. OK. Cool. Is it my turn? <laughs> yeah. So. OK. Uh, hi, my name is Emma Jimbrowda. I am a freshman. I'm from Calabasas, California. but. Originally England and Australia, in case you hear a bit of an accent, that's where that comes from. <laughs> um, on campus, I'm kind of heading towards a major in English and possibly a minor in communications and child studies, uh, but I'm super involved in theater, I'm a varsity athlete, and I do as much as I possibly can in a day. Um, in high school, I was super interested in theater um, and didn't think I was going to pursue that, and then came to Tufts and had a great experience with that, um, as well as just pursuing English and being so challenged by the programs here. So I'll tell you a bit about that later. Your turn, Nikhil. All right. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Nikhil Sinde. I am from Santa Barbara, California. Uh, and this echo on my headphones is really annoying, so I'm going to take them off temporarily. Um, so um, I'm a mechanical engineer on campus, uh, and I'm thinking about uh, thinking of maybe switching to com computer science, and I'm going to get a minor in entrepreneurial leadership. Uh, beyond like beyond academics, I'm involved with Three Ps, which is a student-run uh, theater group on campus. Uh, it kind of reflects what I did in high school, which was a lot of technical theater. So I'm currently an assistant technical director, sometimes a technical director for any shows that come up, uh, and which means that I build the sets and uh, sometimes design. Uh, beyond that, I also work in admissions uh, with Imogen. You might have yeah. seen us on uh, in the Inside Jumbo magazine with, uh, with your admissions uh, acceptance. Um, and I'm also doing a little side project, starting a business. So uh, I'll talk to you a little bit later about that. Nikhil, just tell us, what is the business you're starting? OK, so I'm starting a, uh, a software company. Like at its core, it's kind of hard to explain because it's not exactly all software, um, but it's a software company. So um, think Iron Man's suit, like the heads up display that he has on his mask, but in a car. Uh, and that's pretty wow. much what we're doing in a nutshell. So, yeah, it's really um, cool. so it's called Smart Shield. Um, that's our product. And what it is is a it's an add-on to cars. Uh, that would be sold. Uh, that would be sold like brand, That would be sold. Um, and this add-on would be able to detect where your eyes are, and then based on where your eyes are, uh, add extra information to the driving experience. So you know you're navigating, and it paves the road for you to go on. Versus having to map. You know, versus having to correlate a map that you're looking at, like on your center waterfall display. Uh, to the road in front of you, it just paves the road that you're supposed to be on, and you fall on the paved road. Uh, there are like a whole bunch of other applications, uh, and we're trying to get it to market as soon as possible. Uh, so yeah. Wow. That is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. Do you have an actual working prototype? No. So okay. So we actually. So um, this this past spring break, we got hardware for the eye tracker and. 
we've gotten it, uh, we've gotten it to work on a computer, which is really cool. We've gotten it to work within like a couple of millimeters um, of like where you're looking, and so the proof of concept is there, and we're making a real prototype over the summer. That's actually I'm going home and working with one of my friends from home on the on the prototype. Um, so yeah, I'm super excited. We're trying to get some capital for the summer so we can actually do it, um, and we're gonna hire we're gonna be hiring some software designers and uh, graphics designers. So it's like it's super exciting because it's like wow, I'm like you know I'm hiring people. <laughs> Congratulations, yeah. you're a CEO, yeah. man. <laughs> That's wild. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Well, hi guys, I'm Zobella. I'm a sophomore. I'm studying peace and justice studies, and I'm minoring in Latino studies. On campus, I um, I teach fifth graders on the weekend, and I was involved this year um, with the Tufts Vagina Monologues production. I was an actress, and I also helped um, edit the zine, and I'm also very involved with the Tufts Democrats and helping everybody vote on campus. Can I quickly ask, what's the zine? The zine, okay, a zine is, um, is we made a zine for the Tufts Vagina Monologues. We had women um, from all around the Tufts community, faculty, staff, and students submit stories about their experiences being um, women, and we put it together in this anonymous zine with lots of artwork made from Tufts students, and it was free, and we gave it all around. It was really cool. Oh, that's really neat. Yeah. Cool. Uh, did somebody else join the chat? Yeah, I did. Oh, hey, you want to do Hi. So, yes, please introduce yourself. Okay. So, we're having some slight technical difficulties as we do this on the fly. Um, Dan has graciously given up his feed for the moment, but he's working hard to get into this. Um, so, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us some info? All right. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Shanta. Uh, I'm a sophomore here at uh, Tufts. Um, I'm an international student. I'm from Singapore originally. Um, stuff that I do in camp as well. Um, I'm in a group called Allies, which is a we're, we're a civil military discussion group. We talk about these issues, find ways to um, you know bridge the gap between uh, civilians and uh, military personnel, which I think is incredibly important in a place like uh, like Tufts, where you know the focus on IR is so strong. Um, I also do uh, I also do step. I don't know how many of you know uh, what step is. Explain but it. If you get the chance, um, Google uh, blackout step team. They're so really I'm, good. They're really good. We're really good. <laughs> uh, I'm on blackout step team. It's uh, I, if you've seen like stomp, you know stomp the yard. It's yeah, kind of with like the trash can. Yard. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, no, not not the, the oh, that's, okay. the that's, that's like beats. That's like beats. We have a group called Beats. Oh yeah. That does that kind of stuff. Like, you know, they beat uh they use trash cans and ladders and stuff as like percussion instruments, they're awesome. Um but step is kinda of different, it's like a dance. I don't really know how to describe it, but if you just YouTube uh mm -hmm. blackout blackout step team tufts, you'll find like videos of us. It's great, it's a lot of fun. We actually have a show coming on Friday, so you guys should come, SOC. Yeah. SOC show, but yeah, that's basically what I do here on campus. What's cool. SOC? Mm -hmm. Oh, Spirit of Color. They're the, the uh, contemporary hip hop dance group. They're great. Yeah, they're, they're really awesome. Good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say so for purposes of this, no one has any idea what you're talking about because none of them have actually done this yet. Uh -huh. um, so over explain. Um, <laughs> that's awesome. So I I'm curious. Like your intros were all about sort of like what you're doing outside the class, like what you're involved in. Um, I think a, an interesting starting point would just be like, what were you interested in in high school? Um, you know, as, as I, I interact with freshmen and I hear current students talk about like, you know, sort of the umbrellas. Like, I'm an arts person. I'm a science person. <laughs> like, I want to be a doctor. Like, what what were you guys thinking about in high school that was important? And and sort of how has that changed now that you've been here and you've experienced it? Like, you don't all need to answer because like, you know there's lots to talk about, but. Like, if a couple of you want to jump in and just talk about that, let's go. Sure. Um, yeah. Okay, so for me, I was uh, in high school, I was, for being an engineer, I think most people are pretty surprised to find out that I was a very humanities oriented person in high school. Um, besides technical theater, I, I mean, all of, my, all of my classes were humanities classes. I think besides biology, um, biology and math for uh, junior and senior year. So I actually, I, I did the IB program, and uh, 
part of the reasoning behind that was that I reasoned, like, I, I always knew that I wanted to be an engineer or, like, at, you know, some technical, um, some, some, some technical major, but, um, and so I was like, oh, well, you know, I should cram in all of the humanities that I can now and, um, and, you know, just try and, try and get them all in before, before college. Uh, and that really hasn't changed. Like, I really, I really do enjoy humanities classes, and uh, we have engineers have host credits, uh, humanities, arts, and social sciences, which allow us to take um, a lot, like comparatively a lot of credits um, for uh, hum or for humanities, arts, and social sciences. And so, like, we're uh, that's something that hasn't changed. Is that I have. Um, I, I still love humanities and it's still a lot of fun and I'm still able to take those courses. Um, beyond that, I think um, something that's changed for me is that I'm I'm focusing a lot more on uh, actually to some I totally lost my train of thought. Does somebody else want to go? Yeah, I can. Um, <laughs> Did my waving throw you off? <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> You're so uh, distracting. <laughs> Daniel Grayson in the house, everybody. Yeah. Welcome, Dan. I know, it's good to defeat the internet. <laughs> da, da, da. He, he is one person who doesn't need much introduction here, I guess. <laughs> uh, so we're talking about what we did in high school and how that's changed or grown since then. Um, and one thing I always, people find funny when I tell them is that when I was in high school, I wanted to be a doctor. Um, I came to Tufts because I wanted to be pre-med and heard that the wow. pre-med program was so good. Right? <laughs> Which is crazy when you know me because it just it seems contrary. But when I was in high school, um, I was in an area in which there were only doctors and lawyers. Uh, so that's one of the jobs I knew and was told was successful. And I, I worked at a hospital and I loved it. And I just found that I loved the people side of it, not necessarily the medical side. So when I changed to Tufts, I was completely, I was going to be pre-med and started my chemistry class and quickly found that it wasn't something I was passionate about. Um, and that was hard, telling your parents that, Mom, Dad, I'm not going to be a doctor. I'm going to be an English major. <laughs> it's not what every parent That's wants a moment. to hear. <laughs> um, but it turned out really well because I think uh, when I came to college and had time to see that there were so many other options out there and that what you major in high school is, I mean, in, wow, what you major in college is not necessarily what you end up doing with your life. Mm -hmm. um, it's just kind of a stepping stone to the next step or a way of increasing your knowledge and your boundaries. Um, so I now I'm really, I'm really heading towards an English major. I've loved every class I've taken. Um, I do heaps of theater on the outside, even though I'm not necessarily majoring or minoring. Um, and I'm finding there are other things that I didn't, like, I wanted to be a pediatrician because I loved kids. I didn't realize there's a whole major devoted to kids. <laughs> so now I'm looking at minor child in, in child development, yeah, yeah, which is so cool. So you find that there are many more opportunities in a whole world that you didn't expect to find in high school. I had a um, similar experience to you in finding things that I, you know, I didn't even know existed. Coming from high school, I knew I wanted to do something with environmental studies. That's, that's what I was thinking, and that's why I came to Tufts. I was really excited about the environmental studies program. And then my very first class was Peace and Justice. And I think, Shang Tzu, you were actually in my class first semester, <laughs> um, Peace and Justice Studies. And I was just blown away. I had never um, thought about social issues in like an academic setting, and I had never been able to connect environmental um, issues to social justice issues before. You know, in high school, I took environmental science AP, and that was kind of the extent of it. And I realized how much I was more in love with like the advocacy part of environmentalism versus the hard hard sciences of environment of environmentalism. So that was a really cool experience kind of being opened up in ways you didn't know um, were possible just by stepping into one class. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't know, one thing I really love about college is that, you know, here especially, you don't have to, you know, be a political science major to do these classes mm -hmm. because I, yeah. I'm a history major and mm -hmm. I, I really love history and, like, I'm, I'm very happy with the choices I've made. But, you know, I'll... If I want to do classes in peace and justice studies, or if I want to do classes in political science, because it's like you know maybe uh, China's foreign policy or something, you know, just do it. Just do classes in different yeah. fields, not not to build up a major or anything, but just to do classes you want to do. I'm doing I'm doing comp sci next semester. Yeah. I don't know why I'm doing comp sci next semester because I've never done coding or anything. But someone's like, that's going to be a really good skill. It's going to be a really fun class. It's going to challenge you. And I'm like. 
I'm, yeah. I don't mind doing that. I'm not going to be a comp sci major. No. Okay, yeah. but, but not That's all of you change your interests, right? Because, right. like, I know, I know, because I, I read Anakit's application, right? Like, I know <laughs> you're doing exactly what you came here to do. Yes, uh, yes. I, th my story is somewhat different. Uh, so, uh, when I was a child, right from classes, maybe two or three, I knew or I wanted to be an archaeologist always because wow. that's what fascinated me uh, theoretically and practically. Mm -hmm. uh, but slowly uh, I wanted, I developed a focus on anthropology as well because uh, as you read more and more of history, you understand history. Anthropology adds a degree of nuance to the study of history properly and you get to see society in a better way. But after I came to Tufts, and I, I, this is, by the way, I'm a freshman, I forgot to mention that. And uh, I am, when I first came to Tufts in my first semester, I actually took a lot of uh, archaeology classes. I am still taking this semester. And I decided that I will not major in archaeology, but in anthropology and history with a small focus in archaeology. Mm -hmm. Because I found out that I'm not that kind of a field person, although I'm going on a field <laughs> trip this summer. You Ooh. are? Where are you going? I'm, I'm, I'm going to Troy, to Turkey. And, what? Uh, <laughs> I, uh, are you going to do an excavation? Yes, I'm in an excavation there. Seriously? So, That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, so I, I'll be there for one and a half months, just for wow. the experience to see what do archaeologists really do. But really, after seeing the really theoretically oriented and focused classes of Tufts, I mean, I almost fell in love with the theoretical analysis we did in classes and almost thinking of an answer and history major now as opposed to actually. Oh. So how did, that is, even, how did you even find out about this excavation? Mm -hmm. um, so I had come across their website, which is Project Troya. It's a pretty famous one. It's been run since 1800s. That's a long time. That's, You're going to be participating in history. <laughs> and not, not, not the website, uh, the excavation. It started with the German. Uh, <laughs> <and> <laughs> <English>. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yes, and uh, the best part is they have dug six cities of Troy. Not one, not two, six. <gasps> oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> and this time they're beginning a fresh search for the seventh city. So oh, that looks like fun. <laughs> what? Yeah. That's awesome. So That's impressed. really cool. Cool. Um, so we have our first question from Facebook. <gasps> we do. Yay. Yay. The Facebook. system works. Bring it uh, in. <laughs> so our first question from Jonathan, um, and I'll just read it Jonathan. as is. Um, Jonathan. Jonathan Moore is love. Is his name? Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a good no. name. Love the internet, John. All right. Um, so <laughs> what's what's the one thing you were positive that you will take away with you when you graduate from Tufts? So, so a lot, bunch of you are freshmen, so this is a big oh, question. Yeah. But oh, yeah. take a second, consider. Uh, oh gosh, <laughs> that's a good question. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And by good, I mean hard. <laughs> I mean, uh, for I, I can start. Yeah, if you guys want. Um, I don't think I'll ever be able to get away from, from this amazing community. I think that'll stay that with me. That was my answer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the friends and the people that I've met in classes, in my orientation group, I still have, you know, I'm a sophomore, and the majority of my best friends I met the very first week of school. But then I, you know, we also have people who I've met this semester who, are who I'm very close friends with. Um, now a few people, a few people who are on the chat with us right now. This is the first day I've met you guys, but I Yay. think probably from now on I'll continue to wave and smile at you on campus because that's just how Please the community works. You meet someone yeah. and Waving. then you keep seeing them. Asabi. Yeah, <laughs> Shamsa and I have had several peace and justice classes together, and we probably will com continue having them throughout our entire um, four years. So I think for me, I'll definitely right. keep this community very close. Yeah. I totally cool. agree with that. Like that was my answer: is the the people you meet here. And every time we get asked the question, "Why did you choose Tufts?" You find that so many people will say, "Oh, it's because of the people I met and the environment I was in." And that's is so true. But what does that actually mean, right? Because like, yeah. it, I, I mean, every school right. I think that anybody's going to visit, like, oh, what's the best part of this? You know, yeah. no one's going to be like, the best part is the grass. 
<laughs> I don't know. Alcross is pretty good. I guess. Today is especially good. I mean, I, I was, I was about, I, I was about to say one thing. You will take away from Tufts will be the spring afternoons in the <laughs> oh. on. It is. Yeah. yeah. No, I think at the end of the day, it's that the people you find at Tufts are are very uh, passion, interesting, and just fascinating people. Like, you're just sitting in this conversation with a bunch of you, I haven't, some of you I haven't met before, and I'm learning new things, and I'm so fascinated by the things you're doing. Like, that is really neat. And those conversations, this type of conversation, is something you have on a daily basis with people you meet in the dining hall, or your dorm mate, or whoever it is. I know new things about my, my roommate all the time that I didn't <laughs> know. And we lived together for almost a year now, and that that type of community is so cool. It's constantly changing and constantly challenging and just a fascinating place to, to live and learn. And I also think Tufts in all ways has the perfect size. It's not as small yeah. that you meet the same <laughs> people all the time and it's not as large that you meet a, one, a person once and then you lose him or her. Yeah. So Tufts also has the, and this goes for classes as well and I think the best classes offered by Tufts are small seminars or independent study programs where you study one is to one with a professor and uh, I, I think that's something seriously that's something you will take away from here like next semester I want to do an independent study with a professor and I asked him that what should be the syllabus and he told me why don't you make the syllabus and give it to me <laughs> no, no, that means I have no one to blame when I have to do the readings, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's what it comes down to, so I, yeah, that's the main point. I think cool. going off of that, like, I, okay, so I'm taking a physics class this semester, and it's, um, it's taught in a style called reverse classroom, or flipped classroom. Oh, I've uh, heard about that. And it's so cool, yeah, I mean, it's just like, so essentially we, we have the lectures outside of class. Like, we, you know, the internet is a is a very accessible place where we can pretty much find all the information that we need. And so, um, and so, like, we so we learn we learn outside of the class, and then inside class we just go over problems. And those these problems are genuinely hard. They they might you know we think we think they're not really or a lot of people think they're not related to what we're doing when we're learning outside, but they are. It's just that they're iterations, like very complex iterations of what we're learning outside of class. And I think that that, um, that kind of lends itself to people really thinking about uh, what they're learning and then how they apply it to the real world. And I, mm -hmm. think, um, I think that's something that's really emphasized at Tufts and uh, for me in the School of Engineering, for sure. So like from an academic standpoint, we're getting a very, very solid foundation for not only like what we're learning, but also how to learn like new information mm -hmm. because that's like a lifelong process. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Uh, Justin, Justin, we can't, we can't hear, hear you. you. Ditto. Or, wait, Jenkins. Justin, we can't hear you. Yeah, hold up a yeah. sec. Right. There we go, oh, technology. There, yeah. there we go. <laughs> I, even I'm still figuring out how this works. Um, okay, questions are coming in fast and furious, and my motion <gasps> still accomplished the task of interrupting you. So yeah. let's uh, let's go to the next question from Dave, from Gabe, and I think this is a, a relevant question. Hey. Um, he, he doesn't have a fu as fun a name as Jonathan, but it's All right. Still a good still name, love him. right? Um, so <laughs> let's let's go to Gabe. How have you handled balancing everything out at Tufts? Um, cool. th this is a, this is a, another big question, and I think it's no secret that you know, college is a big adjustment and mm -hmm. so, you know, like not everything is all amazing all the time when you're transitioning <laughs> to something completely new, right? So yeah. why don't a couple of you, you know, because we've got questions coming in, yeah. not everybody needs to tackle it, but why don't a couple of you just sort of share what your first year was or is like? Yeah. Well, uh, I think my first year was pretty was pretty okay generally like you know I didn't <laughs> do too many classes I didn't like overload too much. This year though, um, I took this class called Epic. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a year long class Ooh. based on like one theme, and this year the theme was uh, global health and security. The way this works is that the first semester you're just inundated with reading. You're just like it just hits you. You know, we had I'm not kidding. We had 500 pages of reading. Oh my gosh. Week, pretty much, you know, every week. The exams were like three and a half, four hours long because there was just that much wow. information to to get inside uh, get inside your head. And at the same time I had just joined Blackout, I was doing like a new a new activity on campus. So 
the fall was was challenging. Um, there were times when like you really got to decide, you know, am I going to be able to go out for a movie this weekend with some friends? Am I really able to go, you know, or yeah. do I have to go to the library and stay in there, you know, <laughs> buckle, just just knuckle down and, and get it done? And I think that's it's hard because there's always so many things happening here. You know, there are like films, Tufts film series shows, movies every weekend. There's always like a activity going on, a cultural activity, stuff like that. For me, the, the, the challenge of balancing was realizing that, hey, you know, um, it's important to, to study. study. Study hard because this is what you're supposed to do, you know, in college. Yeah. And, you know, giving up some of that was, was a bit hard, but it, it helped because we had a very tight community as a class, so we helped out each other. So it's, it's definitely well, doable. Yeah, well, as a as a freshman, I just went through this myself, um, so I can attest to what you just said. Um, a big thing for me was that I wasn't expecting to have a hard time. I kind of figured that I was one of those students in high school that did everything and was really busy yeah. and A plus mm -hmm. is all over the place. And, like, mm -hmm. wasn't expecting to come to Tufts and have to work as hard as I had to work. Um, and first semester, I dove right in. I was. Um, I was taking a full five classes. I was actually a, a lead in a play. I was working in admissions uh, as often as I could. <laughs> um, I was also tr working on track, and I just joined Trunk. So every second, what's oh, Trunk? <laughs> um, <laughs> trunk is Tufts Traveling Treasure Trunk, which is our children's theater troupe on campus. We perform for kids all over Boston. There's actually a little video up on the admissions website right now if you want to go check. I'll it say out. shameless plug, Imogen. You, <laughs> you made that, that video. You can plug it. <laughs> <laughs> I plugged it. I'm, I have no shame about that. Anyway, so I was really, really super busy. Like, there was, it was insane, actually. Um, and there were days where I just would get home at, like, midnight and still have four hours of homework to do and didn't know how to deal with my time. You can ask Justin and Nikhil. I actually scheduled showers in. <laughs> do you remember me having that conversation yeah. with you? <laughs> yeah. It was, it was, it was Things insane. you never thought would be public on the Internet. <laughs> um, Hey, no am, I gonna, am I going to shower today? No shame. <laughs> I, it, was in my, it was in my schedule. I was doing it. That was the whole point of it. Um, so I had a very busy schedule, but I also like I made sure that I, I worked it out in my brain what I was going to do next. Um, and I think at the end of the day, this semester, I tried to take a step back and kind of assess that it, it is very easy here to become over-involved so quickly because there are so many amazing opportunities. Um, and I had to kind of pick and choose and, and find the ones that are important to me. And that was difficult, but in the end, it's definitely worth it because you do find amazing things to do. Uh, another, another quick thing I would like to suggest before moving on to the next question would be, uh, it's crucial in your first year if you get to know professors personally rather than just having them standing up on a podium and lecturing mm -hmm. in class because that's what matters and you have renowned scholars from all over the world at Tufts and a great opportunity to do that is office hours when professors have designated office hours when they meet anyone who goes up. So it's a great idea to get up, uh, I mean go directly to your professor, talk to him or her about your uh, any problem you're facing, your future career goals and this way you, I mean that's what I did all my first year and I have developed excellent relationships with many, many faculty members at Tufts. Yeah. And that is Who's your favorite? Yeah, yes. Hello. Who's your favorite? Uh, uh, Professor Aisha Jalal from the History Department and also uh, Professor Sarah Pinto from the Anthropology Department. They've been really, uh, they are great scholars and also, I mean, I took a very heavy first semester. I took, in fact, I took six classes. I took them. Uh, <laughs> so what's, what's, norm Whoa. what's normal? Like, put, put a heavy semester in context for us. Um, generally, students in the first semester take five, if not five, four classes. Four. And four. 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 Okay. Okay. <laughs> you are wrong. <laughs> Uh, yeah. so you want to take six, you need to ask for permission. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, special. Um, yeah, I, because one of the professors was leaving and I couldn't take her class. She was going on leave and I wanted to take, take her class badly, so I got permission from the dean and did it. But I don't recommend that. That was a little <laughs> rough. But, but in spite of having that, you know, this conversation with professors and a little, you know, we're doing work, a little work on time helps rather than keeping everything for the finals. That's a general rule for everything. But <laughs> I would really stress on getting to know your professor as well because that's what really matters mm -hmm. later on. So. <laughs> Justin, did you have a question you wanted to ask us? I always have questions. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, so, the, so, 
so then. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I just started the the feed again in my ear, and I got really confused. Uh, okay, so the next question, um, again, like twenty seventeen seems good at asking these really really big questions. For you watching, let's get specific too. Okay. Don't be afraid. Um, so the next one um, is from Bretsky German. Um, German, Mr. German. So again, big question. Question, um, Annika, you kind of touched on it a little bit. I, I suspect how it begins, but how easy is it involved to become in research? Like, what does that mean yeah. to you now that you're here? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, should I take the begin that? Go on. Right, yeah. 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 All right. So, uh, undergraduate research is really big on Tufts, and you have ample opportunities and resources to use it. We have, uh, first things first, we have quite a lot of endowment in various forms through the university administration directly and also through the department in various ways. So I wouldn't worry about funding or academic support in any ways. What is needed is a basic theoretical background which you should start in your first and second semester by taking classes related and finally tie up your what you want to do whatever you want to research on this is far easier in the humanities than in the sciences because in the sciences you need really at least two years worth of good solid background before getting into serious research easier in the humanities and I myself I'm involved in a some degrees of research in India and anthropology I recently presented in the Miami undergraduate classics conference at Miami University in Ohio there was a paper on Sanskrit drama and others, and uh, wait, what? Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sorry. That that was an analysis of gender roles in a, a Sanskrit drama uh, wow. of wow. In the fourth century. Yes. Where so, do you go to find Sanskrit drama? <laughs> where does, does one just like go to the library and like? Where do uh, I get this Sanskrit drama? Uh, uh, they are taught in our classics department as well, so we, we do have classes on them. I mean, they, wow. they, are, so they are taught side by side with Greek and Latin and historical linguistics. Wow. So uh, the resources are available at, at all means. And also, our library has a great collection of microfilms and uh, archival uh, materials and everything. And also, being in the Boston area is of help even beyond Tufts, uh, we need to, we need to meet scholars who are around. So that really helps, I think. And also we have the Summer Scholars Program, which is a prestigious program, which you, um, not as a freshman, but maybe if you apply as a rising junior or sophomore, you get to stay with a professor and get enough grant to stay in campus over the summer and do your own work with the professor. Uh, Annika, uh, Annika, how do you how do you get started with that? Like, do you just show up and like you know Professor Jalal's office and say I'm interested in studying Sanskrit drama? Like, what? Uh, <laughs> how does that begin? Uh, basically, yes. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 The, actually, that's how it begins. Uh, we, I mean, that that's what I did. I just uh, showed up in professors' offices. Of course, I did a background research on them on internet, something we call stalking, but uh, <laughs> we, that, that, is, that, that, is, that, that is to be done, and once, you are, once you're familiar with a professor's specialties, you can just show up, uh, you can shoot an email and just show up to them and discuss whatever is uh, going on about, uh, and, if, if, and I, I would just say, with first enrolling in a class and getting to know the professor a little before committing to a research because you should know whether you take to the professor or not mm -hmm. and whether the ideas and match on because intellectual frequency matters in those respects. Um, so yes, uh, yes, yes, oh, go ahead. Sorry, I, I just wanted to jump in on research because I actually did some research with Epic over uh, winter break. So if thinking about it the way the way you know the kind of research I did it's it's fascinating that they would let undergraduates just go somewhere and do do research so mm -hmm. like I mentioned my class this year was in global health so um, there were four of us myself and three other friends we went to Kosovo all right we went <laughs> oh, to Kosovo wow. for two weeks so to, to, to look at another you know, state the healthcare system and Kosovo is a very interesting country because it's post communist post conflict new, uh, newly independent it was, you know, there's corruption, people are poor. It's, there's so many different factors at play there. And the four of us, we just, like, 
we through through the IGL, the Institute of Global Leadership that mm -hmm. runs nice. Epic at Tufts, they knew somebody who had worked previously in Kosovo, so we went to her, got like some contacts. We emailed one World Health Organization person in country. We turned up, we met with her, and you know, from there it just snowballed. Like she gave us more contacts, we went around the country interviewing people, visiting hospitals. Mm -hmm. We met the uh, Minister of Health in Kosovo, spoke to him for a couple of hours, oh, just wow. you know, four wow. of us. And cool. it's, it's amazing if you think about the kind of opportunities we had to do research as, you know, at the undergraduate level, and it's, it's great. It was, it was an incredible experience. You know, the four of us, we became very close, but mm -hmm. we also learned so much more about something that's really, really important. So that was, that was a great experience for me. Shanta, awesome. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat a little bit because I know some yeah. things about you that the others don't. <laughs> yeah. Do you share? Yeah. You, I, I, you know, before I jumped in, but I heard you talking about, you know, being a part of allies and working on civil military conflict. Okay. And now you're talking about kind of post-conflict Kosovo. <laughs> I know what he's going to say. I know yeah. what you're going to say. Um, so do you want to tell them what you do in your other life? Hi. Uh, so I don't know how many of you know this, but in Singapore we have conscription. So which, I would, which is what? Explain. Which, which is basically they, they call you up to do military service for two years. Most people do it for two years and then they move on with their life. I did it for about a year and decided, hey, you know, this is actually something meaningful and like I see how, you know, I can contribute to be a member of a society, of the international society by doing good work here. So I signed on with the Navy back home. So like every summer I go back, I do some work with the Navy. Wow. Once I'm done at Tufts, so cool. I'm going to go back to the Navy back home and yeah. Wow. Wow. That, do you that, feel that's kind that, of one reason why I like allies. Yeah, right. but do you feel like the work that you're doing here actually has an influence on that? I think, um, I'm a history major. The first thing I'm going to be doing when I get back home is I've got to learn navigation, so that's geometry and math. So on that <laughs> front, no. <laughs> allies, I'm meeting so many people who are interested in you know, security, security mm -hmm. studies, interested in the ways mm -hmm. that you know, the U.S. U.S. foreign policy, interested in U.S. foreign policy, interested in uh, civil military relations. Uh, from uh, from my perspective, you know, there's a lot, lot of resources, a lot of tension being shifted to the Pacific. So through allies, I have the chance to talk to people at the service academies, at the Naval Academy, at the Air Force Academy. I get to talk to people who are thinkers in in the IR fields and stuff like that. It's it's contributing to that much um, greater understanding and knowledge of you know really in terms of foreign policy and security studies, what, what does it mean when you say there's a shift to the Pacific? And that's incredibly valuable for me, like professionally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, what is, uh, okay. What's your area of focus in your major in history? I, mean, what, I don't know yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds interesting. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, this I, is have another, I have another question. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I'm going to jump in. I'm going to keep us moving because we're, yeah. we're covering a lot of ground and we got to yeah. be native guides, right? So yeah. <laughs> um, let's, let's, let's hear from La Lakshmi. I'm sorry if I've butchered your name. Um, <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> don't think we're talking about the same thing. Anyway, um, so from one of our Facebookers, Lakshmi Shankar, can you tell me about the experimental college? Yes, I will tell you about the experimental college. <laughs> I am such a big fan of the experimental college. I try to take a class at the X College every single semester. Wow. Um, the experimental college is basically this really cool thing that Tufts has that no, but not many other colleges have, where we bring in people who are professionals in their field to teach a super cool class. Um, so these aren't people who are traditional professors. For example, um, my freshman year, my first semester, I took a class called um, Ex Exploring the Massachusetts Political Scene. And <laughs> what we did was it was taught by two seniors, which was super cool. Um, students can actually apply to teach classes at the X College, through the X College. And we just studied Massachusetts politics. So for politics freaks like me, it was fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, we did a lot of field trips. We went to the State House. We met with Dukakis. It was super cool. Um, and then second semester, I took an amazing one called Human Rights and Climate Change. So that just shows you like how different the X College courses are. There's one of my best friends. 
took one about vampires that was taught by a vampirologist who even what? knew that was a what? thing. What? Um, I don't think that is a thing, Zobella. <laughs> I, I, I think that just got made a thing. Next card, I took, I took um, something about superheroes and like the American identity oh, last year for X College. So we just read like um, comics. Oh, cool. I took one of those freshman prospect. Okay, so they do, they do advising through the X College as well. So you can actually, when you sign up for classes, well, not classes, but when you sign up for advising, you get to choose whether you want to have a host advisor, which means that you're just paired with a faculty member who's your advisor, but you don't actually have class with them. Or you can take a class taught by a professor. Or you can take a class from the X College, which is either Explorations or Perspectives, and you're matched with uh, teachers, like uh, seniors, who will actually teach a course to you. So my first semester, I took a Perspectives course called Films and Genocide, and it was taught by two, a senior and a junior, and they're just lovely. And from week one, from orientation, they were there with us. Um, so we also got this amazing sort of older sibling vibe from them because they took care of us throughout the semester but they also were there to teach us and when you're sitting in a room every week for four hours discussing genocide you become very close to the people you're with um, <laughs> so yeah I was like sorry yeah, um, no so so these classes are all I, I think pretty interesting I mean how many of you just show your hand in the screen like how many of you have heard of an ex-college class that you would want to take right, like oh, all of you, you know, me too and I don't yeah. even go here um, <laughs> so so um, we have a follow-up question that was happening while you guys were talking. Um, oh, wow. Can you talk about like the the difficulty, the rigor of these ex-college courses? So you've got like regular classes, you've got um, all the other stuff you do. Like, are they difficult? What are the credits like? Like, give yeah. us some specifics. Well, the class I took uh, my first semester, which is the freshman course, is Pascal. So you do get this advising, and you have an incredible subject matter, but it, you, it's not necessarily stressful. So it's a paper every week, and you watch the films, and there's a project at the end, and that's about it. But I think that's different than a lot of other ex-college classes. Can anybody talk to that? For, yeah, for my human rights and climate change class, um, it was a full credit, and it was a lot of work. We met once a week um, for three hours, which is kind of a, a long time to meet in one setting. Um, we had lots of reading, but it was so worth it. I was so into it. And a cool thing that you can do with ex-college classes is you can petition to get um, credit towards your major with some of the ex-college courses. So yes. actually for my Peace and Justice Studies major, which I'm concentrating on environmental issues, I was able to get credit for that ex-college class I took. So you can really make them work um, for your schedule. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, Here's another one. I'm like, I'm listening to these notifications like go crazy in my ear. Um, so, so um, I think it's it's no secret that Boston is a pretty special place. Um, what can you guys speak to the relationship you have with maybe people from other colleges in Boston, other colleges generally? Like, we're in a cool network, and yeah. that's it's easy to say that, but like, prove it. Yeah. I, so this, I have. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Okay, sorry. I was just going <laughs> to say this weekend on Friday, I'm going to MIT's Spring Fling, which is oh, exciting. Oh, yeah, oh, Mac oh, 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 oh. I was supposed to go, but as a sea show. <laughs> right. Okay. So that was just a quick example. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I would say, in, I mean, beyond Boston, the Northeast in general, um, I know mm. there are, I have a lot of friends who are at Brown, and they've come up. Um, They've come up for the weekend, and it's just like it's so much fun. You know, they're friends from high school, but then they're also like random people that come with them, and like I, <laughs> yeah. you know, they're really cool. And I mean, as far as in Boston, um, I, I have a friend at MIT, and she's awesome. I go try and visit her like what uh, during the weekends, and in general, like I would say that um, it's less competitive and more collaborative, uh, yeah. which is like yes. really cool. Uh, I I also one of the friends who comes up from Brown actually she's. Uh, he is the girlfriend of one of my good friends uh, who lives in the hall, in my hall. So like wow. he, um, he actually he turned me on to um, to like mathematical origami and like just like really cool things that you can do and like proofs that you can that you can create uh, through like through ge geometry and like through you know making uh, making origami pieces and like yeah. you know it's just like those random things that are really cool and that uh, that makes those relationships like really enriching. Yeah. Plus, I think, like, if you're coming from far away, or even if you're not coming from that far away, but you're not from Boston, it's like, 
even if you don't know a lot of people from your high school who come here, because we're not that big, yeah. like, you know people at the other schools that you Absolutely. can visit from home. Oh, yeah. 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 I think one of the cool things is um, I'm very lucky to be an athlete here, and um, Varsity pole vaulter, and I absolutely love it. Although I'm out right now because I'm injured. But that's besides the point. Because in the beginning of the season, when I was going to meets every weekend, I was meeting these incre incredible people from other schools who did the same sport I do. So we're sitting by the pole vault pits, and you get kind of bored, so you just kind of start talking. <laughs> and it's great because there's such a community that's found within sports, especially with other schools and schools within Boston who are going through the same thing. And right now, we actually lost our pole vault coach, and so our team is going down to Harvard every week. Monday to vote with their coach so it's very collaborative and, and communicative it's, it's wonderful yes. and, and also I think our the community in Boston expands in such a way even just today we are having the top uh, 100k challenge for social innovation where we have teams from all over the area I mean there are teams from Harvard and MIT and one of my friends is a freshman he, he's the one of the finalists there also, uh, he's the only he's the only freshman in it actually. Yes, oh, he's the only wow. freshman. Good luck, man. <laughs> and it's a really I mean, and he's competing with professors, with alumni, with oh, ev everyone else. The only freshman there also, and also as uh, Mr. Grayson said about turning up in in professors' offices about. So I know. Yeah. I, I don't know why. I, like I've told you a million times, you can just call me Dan. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So as Dan said, you can, uh, showing showing up in professors' offices of Tufts. Well, you can do that with other universities also. I've done that. It works. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay. New question thrown yeah. it at you. Um, so here is a more gen generic one. So why don't two of you comment on this one? Because I want to want to keep us moving. Um, <laughs> How is the music scene at Tufts? Concerts, groups, etc. And I'm quoting Graham exactly. Nice. <laughs> oh, okay. Because I'm already talking. I'll just start. Oh, amazing! It's absolutely incredible. Um, my best friend is actually a Beelzebub. He's a freshman. He, um, if you have the magazine Jumbo, he's on the cover of that. It's no big deal. Um, anyway, he's really involved in the music scene and just absolutely loves it. Um, it's a very interesting group for people because all the acapella groups there are dozens of them. They all are very close knit, and everybody's friends with everybody else. Uh, they're also great. Uh, small. Small groups of musicians. I'm sure you've heard about Beach, which is bang everything at Tufts. Uh, they're <laughs> incredible. One of the one of the girls who works with us, Mary, is a member of Beats, and she absolutely loves it. Um, and then, if you are a musician but you don't want to be a part of a group, that's totally fine. We have great programs. Like you can go into the practice rooms at all hours. I get on at like midnight and sing my heart out, and it's super fun. Um, so there's so many ways and, of getting involved, and and it's a great And if you're community. a listener, yeah. I'm a listener. I don't play music. Um, we have great concerts all the time. My best friends are actually. Um, run this club on, on campus called Midnight at Tufts yeah. and they're, they bring uh -huh. alternative music bands um, to campus which is really cool. We also have Apple Jam which brings like punk rock bands to campus and then we also have Concert Board which brings bands like um, Nelly who's coming to campus yeah. on Saturday <laughs> and um, big bands like that. So we have like such a wide range of um, concerts whether it be like at one of our um, houses where people like a University owned house where students live on campus, or whether it be like on our lawn in a huge atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So these are a lot of loud things. Um, and we have gotten a question, then I'm going to fold into a larger question. Okay. Um, are the dorms <laughs> quiet? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about the dorms. So, like, that's such you know, a loaded question, though, because you don't yeah. know whether they want. I know. Yes that's, to that's why I, ha I had to ask it. So we have to be um, honest. So let's yeah. let's hear it. Dorms. Um, dorm okay. Well, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Wait. Sorry, can I sorry. can I start? How many of you live in all freshman or, or lived in all freshman housing? Yee. And how many of you were mixed class? Okay. Cool. <laughs> uh, okay. My. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'll, I'll make it quick. My yeah. dorm last year was really quiet, and that wasn't a good thing because you know there wasn't a lot of like social interaction among uh, people on a large scale. Like we had all our own friends, but there wasn't like a very strong sense of community in the entire dorm. This year it's so much better. So like, there's so many of us in the lounge every night, just hanging out, doing work, watching videos together, and it's it's not as quiet, but. You know, the sense of community is so much stronger, and I'm really loving where I'm living this year. That's cool. So, like, my, my freshman dorm experience has been fantastic. So I live in an all-freshman dorm, Hill Hall. 
Um, and it is just a blast. I mean, so um, I live on the fourth floor, uh, which it seems like it would be a crappy floor to live on because there's a there's an entrance from the first floor and the second floor, and I try and go in from the second floor entrance. But the point is, is that I have to go up the stairs. But it's actually awesome because we get a really, really beautiful view of Medford. Um, and beyond that, like, we don't actually, like, when we make a lot of noise, the RAs don't actually care that much. Um, but I would say the noise, uh, or, like, the, the noise level really is dependent on the night um, mm -hmm. and the time. Um, because, like, in the middle of the day, it's going to be dead silent. Um, but, <laughs> like, once you get to nighttime, and, of course, dependent on if it's a week, weeknight or a, um, or a weekend night, it'll be, it'll just be, like, wild in a good way. So like, and it's like it's one of those things that you can control. Like we have quiet hours that are, that are designated, uh, so that yeah. people, you know, we have to we have to stay quiet. Um, and they are pretty late. Hours. Yeah, and yeah. Pretty yeah. late, so, one, two, five. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Especially on the weekends, they're they're pretty late. But it's um, about the like noise level. I live right at like the apex of the whole. So, like everybody gathers and talks right outside my dorm, um, <laughs> which is kind of frustrating. But honestly, you go out and say, "Hey guys, I'm trying to sleep," and they'll move the conversation. Like people are so yeah. aware that there are people sleeping. That's right next super door. easy to do. Yeah. yeah. Um, so from Kate, Kate Mir, um, on the topic of dorms, mm. would you recommend all freshmen or mixed? Um, and I'm and I'm gonna add. Like, how did you find your roommate? Oh, okay. Go well, ahead. Um, Don't all jump in at once. Yeah, well, I was <laughs> wondering if anybody else wanted to say something. I can do it. Go I, for it. <laughs> yeah, I was really excited about the roommate process. Um, Tufts gives you the option to actually, like, you fill out, like, ten questions or whatever that are supposed to kind of sum you up in essence, which I, I don't know how they do that, but it asks you weird questions like, do you listen to reggae music and things like that? Like, <laughs> I've, I've heard <laughs> what time do you go to sleep? sleep? I've heard that um, your music choices say a lot about you. Like, yeah, they do. They do. <laughs> and so from that, then they, it, it felt like an online dating site, not that I've ever <laughs> used one of those before, but um, <laughs> they give you like 10 options of people who are you know, rate similar to you, and I, you know, I read the first, like, two, and I was like, oh my goodness, I, I don't want to be with those girls, and then I <laughs> saw, I saw someone who I was like, oh my gosh, she seems super cool, and this was over the summer, you know, as, as a high schooler, and so I, I emailed her, and we talked on the phone, and we, which basically felt like we were starting to date, and um, <laughs> we yep. loved each other, and we're still friends today, and we were roommates, so you can do that, that's like the, that's the not random way to do it. Yeah. No, I lived in I live in all freshman housing and I absolutely love it. Um I chose it because I felt like I wanted to be on the same playing field as everybody else in my in my dorm. Um but I have friends who are in mixed housing and they love it too because they have older counterparts to kind of take care of them and guide them through the first couple weeks, months of college. But anyway, um, my hall is Houston Hall, which is one of the big all freshman dorms. I live on the first floor. Everybody in my hall, are, they're very, very close. And because I'm never there, there's kind of a running joke that I show up when I want to. It's just fun. Um, <laughs> and our RA is great. He's a junior and he takes real good care of us. He always has hall snacks, which is when everybody gets together once a week to kind of talk and check in. So it's a build, real big community. Um, and my roommate and I were actually... We found each other on Facebook. Uh, our, our year created this really cool Facebook group where everybody was writing like full profiles of what they like to do. It really was <laughs> online dating. Um, and we just started emailing and found that we both, at the time, we were both looking pre-med and English. And she is still pre-med and English. I'm just English. So <laughs> she succeeded. Um, but it's really great because she's so lovely. We, we stay up late talking. She's always willing to come to see my shows or check in on me. And it's just been a really cool relationship. And we are parting with we're going to different rooms next year, but we're parting as friends, and that's really neat. It was very successful. Justin, go. Sorry, speakers. Um, <laughs> would you um, would you recommend? This is a question. Would you recommend going with a single, double? Like, what's the sort of standard way? Like, what's the best way that these guys can think about housing? I don't think you get a single as a freshman, can you? You can. 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 You can
It's very all, rare. Yeah. Very rare. I mean, I, I know probably two freshmen who have... Uh, also, if you have medical needs, you can get one yeah, with yeah. medical needs. Yeah. That's true. Um, um, I think it's just part of the college experience to be in a double. Like, to me, it was one of those, like, I'm going to go to college and have a roommate, and just like my dad always talks about his college roommate, it'll be one of those situations. <laughs> so it's interesting because you have to learn to live with somebody else who you may... You don't know in the beginning, and I always had my own room, so it was, it was a, it's a learning curve. <laughs> um, but it's definitely one of those really neat challenges of college and also because you also have someone to kind of lean on if you need it um, and there's always somebody in the room to look after you I don't know what do you guys think definitely yeah. um, I really like I really like my roommate he and I are pals and like it just it's really cool because I actually I can I like to say that I converted him to the to the dark side um, meaning that I made him an engineer or like he transferred <laughs> 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 yeah, and it was like it was really cool because like we would just have you know random projects that we'd be up until three o'clock in the morning doing you know with playing with robotics for a semester, and um, we, he was just like, wow, that's really cool. I want to do that, and mm. so like he became an engineer. But the point is, is that um, like he and I are really close, and I think beyond like I shared a room with my sister for the first two years of high school. And um, that was tough, but like this was different because I didn't know the person, and it was like yeah. a completely random stranger. Um, but like, it's just been it's been fun because like we you know we joke around and we just you know we can hang out a lot. Uh, but then it's also like it's also a learning curve with like you know learning to live with someone in in all aspects. So yeah, yeah. and my, my roommate and I are completely. Two opposite poles. I mean, um, <laughs> which is not surprising. I mean, I'm, we are we are both from completely different setups. But even we and uh, we did not get along. Uh, we did not go through roommate search processes. It's my fault. I didn't really pay any t any attention to roommate. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, strange. We did get along really well. And uh, <laughs> at the end of the year, I'm I, I'm surprised we got along really well. And, and in spite of all the differences, and so I think that even if you are assigned a roommate, I think uh, you, you somehow take to it, and you and learning to adjust with another person is the yeah. probably the best thing. One of the big takeaways from college, and uh, I, I'm pretty sure you'll have a good time with your roommate. Okay, one thing before we we finish this topic. Um, so like the the stupid music questions that they ask on the survey, they're totally worth it because like Adrian, my roommate, and I, um, we share. They're like similar tastes in music, but not so similar that we're like bordered to each other's taste. And so we like we use each other as like recommenders for new music. It's pretty cool. So yeah, That's definitely awesome. definitely pay attention then... to that on your application. <laughs> Most All right. Part. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. <laughs> All right. Here I come. Ready? All right. Yeah. All right. Um, so here is um, another big question, but I think it's actually worth us ending on. Um, and this one's coming from Camille Hironaka. It's the last one. It's the last it's question. The last one. Um, what's the atmosphere of Tufts like? Um, is it competitive? Is it laid back? Is there a lot of school spirit? Um, go. Oh, tricky. I would I say it's collaborative. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I love working with my peers, whether I'm working on individual projects, just like sitting with my friends on our separate computers doing things, sitting on the lawn working, um, or whether it's working in groups. I never, I, I think it's like a healthy sense of competitiveness, like we all want each other to do well and we all want um, to succeed, but I never feel, um, I never feel like it's a, a bad competitiveness, which I did feel in high school, and so I was actually really thankful to get away from that. Yeah. No, I totally agree with that. I think it is very supportive and it's an interesting environment to be in because everybody is so passionate about different things that you do find you're challenged all the time, but again, a really positive way. Yeah. Um, I also think as far as school spirit goes, uh, we are kind of obsessed with our mascot Jumbo. Oh, <laughs> and yeah. Everybody, the minute you get into Tufts, you will receive a million elephants, and they will all make their way into your dorm room. I promise you. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that just kind of gives you. Yeah. Oh, there you are. There you are. <laughs> one right there. I was say, can you see that? They're yeah. everywhere. Johnson, you're you're sitting there. Yeah, that's. <laughs> <laughs> well, we love our elephants, and that kind of extends extends beyond that. And there are so many student groups that are are there to kind of foster this community sense and and school spirit. Like, there's a group called Fan the Fire, which brings uh, students out to athletic events, which is great, um, and a whole bunch of others for different areas of the school. But yeah, I'd 
stay, stay out of school spirit is pretty great. It's, it's there if you want it, but it's up to you. <laughs> yeah. um, I'd just like to like touch quickly on like academics again. Uh, one thing that I was really surprised about when I came here is that people like actually like really they don't they don't just like help you by obligation or because you ask and they feel obligated to, to help you because you asked it like they actually want to help you and it's like it's really cool yeah. I mean so I um I have an RA who happens to be a TA for Comp 11 which is an introductory computer science class that I'm in and um, he just act like right before this he just helped me for three and a half hours uh figuring out one stupid bug in my program, which I'm so annoyed about. But that's besides the point. <laughs> uh, and the, I mean, the point is, is that he had hours, like he was obligated to, uh, to hold office hours for one and a half of those three and a half hours. And he like stuck it all the way through and he was like, well, you know, I'm busy, but I really want to, you know, I want to help you uh, fix this problem. Mm -hmm. And so like, it's beyond collaborative in a lot of senses in that um, people want to learn from your problems. So, like, you know, I have this comp, uh, comp sci set or problem set, and I am like, like, just struggling so hard with it. But he's like, well, this is going to be a good opportunity for me to learn. So why don't I, you know, why don't I learn? Or why don't Mc I? Nikhil, yeah. what what was the bug? Um, it, oh. <laughs> You're killing I, him, Justin. You're I know. Him. I, I, have, to know. I okay. have to know. So there are these things called linked lists where um, you have and uh, comp sci people that are uh, that are comp sci people in high school. I'm sorry because I'm going to not give a very accurate description. Um, but essentially, they're like they're lists that you can create in in uh, in your memory that uh, that you can access one from the end of the other. So like. You have to go through it sequentially, and uh, my problem was what. Whenever you create a list, you have to create a pointer to the next term in the list, and um, and it's going to like. So essentially, I was pointing. I was pointing to the same list over and over again, and I was making an infinite loop, and it was bad, and it was like <laughs> it, it was just so frustrating. So now you know, and you probably don't understand and don't want to understand. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing comp 11 next semester. And Are I you really? Did not understand anything you just said, so I think <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, that's, that's the I reason think... why you're taking the class. I, I, I mean, I fooled around a little bit in high school, but I didn't do any serious coding. I've never touched a computer to code in my life. I'm just like, oh, Facebook. <laughs> I think. <laughs> I, I think about the school atmosphere. One more thing. This is a very charged and a very active campus, and every day something or the other mm -hmm. is going on, and. They may be as diverse things as possible. Um, I mean, I, I'll give you a short example. One day I attend a talk on Persian literature. The next day one on a gender theorist. The next day going on to game theory analysis. So all sorts of topics, all sorts of different. So you you, you will just be amazed by the diversity and how much people are committed mm -hmm. to each of them. And uh, at that level, competition doesn't really play mm -hmm. a great role. So don't worry <laughs> about that. <laughs> so. Oh, I know. Yeah. This was really fun. Yeah. Um, so just to wrap this up, um, I want to say for everyone we answered questions, thank you for asking them. Um, to David, to um, Ruth, to the others who asked and we didn't have time, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm signing off on a radio show. This is like a small, <laughs> a small, a small dream of mine that's coming through. Ooh. Um, yeah, but, did, you, know, you know, I did that. I, I signed. I was a DJ for WMFO. Like you, you're you were? true, Justin. They can come true. Daniel, <laughs> what is WMFO? That's, we're gonna, that's how this is going to end. Your <laughs> dreams can come true. Um, so, on that note, thank you all for tuning in and watching. Um, for those of you who are watching the feed, not live. Um, sorry for the madness, but not sorry. And um, tomorrow night, which is the 25th of April at 6 p.m., same place. Um, we're going to be having an engineering discussion, um, and this was so much fun that we may end up having another one of these soon. So Lovely, keep, yeah. keep keep on the Facebook, keep updated. Um, Yo, Tom Bentov wants a shout out. Shout out. Shout out. <laughs> shout out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. All right, bye, bye. Everybody. Say bye. bye.